nine o'clock. Um, before we start, I will just do a quick roll call. Uh, I'm, yeah. Yeah, we good? Yeah, perfect. Um, so in attendance are Shauna Warren, Superintendent, Jonathan Conrad, Deputy Superintendent, Lisa Lacroix, Associate Superintendent, Human Resources, myself, Sean Nicholson, Associate Superintendent, Corporate Services, Trustee Ward 1, Janine Pequin, Trustee Ward 2, Cindy Briggs, Trustee Ward 3, Joe Dwyer, Trustee Ward 4, Trish Murray Elliott, Trustee Ward 5, Stacey Buga, Trustee Ward 6, Tasha Otway McClay, and trustee, uh, trustee Ward 7, Irene Gibbons. So I'm going to call this organizational meeting together at 9.01 a.m. And I will move over to the Treaty 6 Acknowledgement Statement. Sturgeon Public Schools respectfully acknowledges that we teach, learn, and grow together on Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Métis. We honor and respect the history, language, ceremonies, and culture of the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people who have called this land home for countless generations. We recognize the Cree, Sotu, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, Nakoto Sui, and Inuit for their care, love, and stewardship, stewardship of this place. We are grateful for those who share their knowledge with us and help to foster a respectful relationship with all of our relatives on this land. We are committed to understanding the harms done in the name of education and continuing to learn to honor the true spirit of Treaty 6 as a promise of friendship, collaboration, and peaceful alliance. Um, uh, Trustee Gibbons. Just before we move into uh, the elections, I just have some words of reflection as an outgoing chair, if you don't mind, yeah. chair, if I put those on the public record. Yeah, go ahead. So as we get ready to start a new school year, I've done some reflecting. I'm coming on three years now, and I've been working hard to learn the role of trustee and the role of the board. The Education Act is clear. First, we have the responsibility to recruit the superintendent and entrust the day-to-day -day management of the school division to the staff through the superintendent. Second, we have a responsibility to develop and implement trustee code of conduct that applies to all trustees of the board including definitions of breaches of, and sanctions. We do not currently have sanctions outlined in policy. Third, we have a responsibility that we provide each student and staff member employed by the board, a welcoming, caring, respectful, and safe learning environment that respects diversity and fosters a sense of belonging. And that's Education Act 33 1D and our board policy 225. As a trustee and a board, we do not have power outside of this boardroom and we do not have individual power. We are a single corporate entity who is to guide from the 10,000 foot and support our one and only employee, employee to entrust her to run the division. As per board policy 221, we shall not attempt to exercise individual authority over the organization and or schools, the superintendent or any member of the staff. Individual trustees will not assume personal responsibility for resolving operational problems or complaints. Any such complaints will be referred forthwith to the superintendent for investigation and resolution. We will not encourage direct communication with employees and members of the public who attempt to bypass school or central office administration, but shall encourage employees and members of the public to utilize reporting lines at the school level or within central office. We must comply with our fiduciary duty to inform the superintendent of concerns brought to our attention. On January 1st, 2023, the Alberta Teaching Proficient Commission opened and appointed commissioner now provides oversight for all teacher and leader, teacher leader professional disciplines. Process now applies equally to all Alberta certified teachers and teacher leaders, regardless of their membership in the ATA. College of Alberta school superintendents and their employing school or school authority. The new discipline model brings Alberta in line with comparable provinces and other regular regulated professions. Where an arm's length organization oversees disciplinary matters for all members of a regulated profession, the new discipline model was introduced to further protect students and enhance accountability and transparency within the teaching profession. 
Therefore, there should be no need to try to trap the superintendent in any wrongdoing or create an environment of hostility and judgment. We are to respect the authority of the superintendent to carry out the executive action and support the superintendent's action, which are exercised with the delegated discretionary power of the position. When we know better, we do better. And as we embark on a new school year, I'm committed to do better as I gain courage and confidence through professional development to better understand the role of the board and the role of the trustee. Moving forward, I am committed to be more vocal around the board table, push to focus on policies, our advocacy role, ensure our policies are clear, and refer to our policies and legislation to check my own behavior as trustee and to hold each other accountable to our role. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Trustee Givens. Um, so as we move into uh, board chair elections, um, I will go to make uh, first call, second call, third call as needed. Um, and then obviously if we have one more than one nomination, we will move into a secret ballot. You, everyone will be passed out ballots. Um, and then those will be counted and uh, delivered, a result delivered back to me. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna make the first call for nominations uh, for the Office of Chair of the Board of Trustees. Um, Trustee Marie Elliott. Um, I would like to nominate Joe Dwyer for Chair of Board of Trustees. Uh, Trustee Dwyer, do you accept? Uh, would you like to say anything? I just promise to turn on my mic every time. Um, I just I just believe in the board and and in our responsibility. I think we can all work together as in a very um, sort of fun way and also a serious way to make Sturgeon Public School Board uh, the best it can be for the kids that attend that that division. I I just believe we're got all got all of us here as trustees have uh, different powers, I would say, and we just need to bring them all together into one place to make the best we can. I believe that the trustee uh, role and chair role is one. And uh, I just know that we can uh, work together to make it a good year and a fun year too. Bring some fun into it and, and uh, enjoy coming to uh, the board meetings. And I believe we can do that as a board, so. That's where I stand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dwyer. Um, so I will ask for a second call for nominations for the Office of Chair of the Board of Trustees. Trustee Pequin. I nominate Tasha Oatway McClay. Oatway, you accept? I accept. You want to make a speech? I do. Thank you. <clears throat> So we find ourselves stuck in a bit of dysfunction right now. Uh, I've spoken to everybody around the table at least once um, in the last week because I needed to know for myself what I might be getting myself into and whether or not I felt I could affect change. Um, I'm pleased to say that although we should probably have a conversation about some of these things, I do feel that I can make a difference. I'm not perfect. I don't have any spare miracles in my pocket and I can't guarantee that I am the right person, but I can promise to foster a culture of collaboration that's built on trust and respect. Through open, respectful communication, everyone will be heard. Frequent review of board of the board goals of achievement and well-being for our students. Frequent review of trustee and administration roles and responsibilities. What is governance versus what is administration? We should always expect the chair to lead by example, and I am here to say that I will authentically do so. We need to recognize our accomplishments and acknowledge our contributions as we move through this year. I think that we can regain balance and find harmony this year. Not by one person or any group of people getting their way, but by having different personalities, engaging in open discussion and expressing differences, differing points of view, and distilling that down to a decision that we all feel comfortable standing behind. 
We succeed as a team and we fail as a team, but my intent as chair is to facilitate a successful path forward to leave a legacy of a healthy, stable board for the next group to come and the groups that come after that. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you, trustee. Um, so I will make a call for third nominations for the Office of Chair of the Board of Trustees. Uh, seeing as there are. Uh, yes. Uh, um, we will. Yes, you can. Uh, so we make that motion. I make the motion for nomination cease. Okay. Hey, um, so seeing as. Oh, sorry. All in favor of the motion. Unanimous. I'm um, seeing as we have two nominations. Um, you will be handed out a blank ballot. Please write the name of the individuals that you are electing as the chair for the board of trustees. Um, they will be counted and then just the end result will be passed back to me to. Um, Got it. So I will ask for a motion that um, Trustee Otley McClay uh, be named uh, a declared chair. Yeah. Okay. I move that we move to a point to a point Tasha O.A. McClay as board chair for the 2024-2025 school year. Yeah, and uh, that is carried as per the nomination. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. No, I do have to do one more thing. Before we uh, just switch over here, I do have to ask for a motion uh, that the ballots uh, for chair be destroyed. Ask for that motion. Givens. I make the motion that the ballots for the chair be destroyed. Okay. 
and uh, yes, all in favor. Sorry. Sorry, you're catching me. <laughs> Carried unanimous, and we will switch. So thank you. Oh, sorry. I will now ask for the first call for nominations of the office of the chair of the board of trustees. Vice chair. Vice chair, sorry. Vice chair. Uh, I Yes, trustee Gibbons. I would like to nominate trustee Buga for the position of vice chair. Uh, I feel that there is a time commitment, and I believe that Trustee Buga is prepared and committed to the extra hours that might occur to fulfill the position of vice chair to its full capacity. Trustee Buga knows that the role of the board or the vice chair is to ensure that the corporate integrity of the board comes first before feelings. She has worked hard the last three years to learn her role as an effective trustee and learn the role of the board. I know she will guide, help the chair to guide the board to a positive culture in which will lead the division. Trustee Buga will also bring back focus to our policies and our advocacy roles with the help of the chair and lead by example because she is always adding to her knowledge to learn the role and truly understands that we have no power as individuals. Um, Trustee Buga, do you accept the nomination? I do accept the nomination. And would you like to speak a few words? Yeah, I would. Thank you. Um, I really hope to learn more in this role, um, but whether I am chosen for this seat or not, I'm committed to learning and growing with this board. If you'll allow me the role, I would like to see it, it defined in a way that truly supports the chair and helps develop the board. I believe our team could be much stronger if we develop each of our strengths and lean on each other as we do our work. Um, like Trustee Dwyer said, I want to enjoy coming to this room every day or every week. Um, the vice chair has an opportunity to focus on building the capacity and the legacy of our board while allowing the chair and superintendent to focus on their well-defined roles. I value integrity, honesty, and transparency, and I have high hopes as well as expectations for our board as we wrap up our four-year term. Thank you. Um, I will now ask for a second call for nominations for the office of the vice chair of the board of trustees. Oh, sorry, Chair Dwyer, or <laughs> Trustee Dwyer, yeah, microphone, thank you. Can't mind stay on permanently. Um, I'd like to nominate uh, Cindy Briggs for Vice Chair. Trustee Briggs, do you accept the nomination? I would accept the nomination, yes. And would you like to speak a few words? Um, sure. Um, I would love to be vice chair again and work in partnership with the chair. I think it's a very important role. Um, I do not have a full-time job anymore. I resigned my full-time job to be devoted to the board. And so I am fully committed and would love to be vice chair again. Thank you. I'd like to ask uh, someone to motion that nominations for the office of the. Oh, sorry, there might be a third call. Uh, third call for nominations for office of the vice chair of the board of trustees. Okay, now I would like to ask uh, someone to make a motion that the nominations for the office of the vice chair of the board of trustees cease. Trustee Peckwin. I move that the nomination nomination for the office of vice chair cease. And all in favor? Carried unanimously. And we will have our nominations. Oh, I need a pen. 
do that again. Uh, I would like a motion to declare Stacy Buga as vice chair. Uh, Trustee Gibbons. I would like to make the motion of uh, Trustee Buga to be vice chair. I would now like a motion uh, for the ballots for the vice chair to be destroyed. Trustee Peckman, I move that we destroy the ballots. For vice chair election. Uh, Trustee Buga has been elected vice chair. Oh, all in favor. Thank you. I would now like uh, to ask Trustee Buga to take the chair of. Vice chair of the board of trustees. We will now take a five minute recess.
Yeah, oh. the motion if you like to motion to the board to come into the package of public board meetings, right? And it says starts at nine. So you would just need someone. Um, you'd have to make an amendment to the motion. All right. That's uh, okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Calling everybody back to the board table now. <clears throat> we are on number six of the organizational meeting agenda, code of ethics. Um Okay, I would um, ask Vice Chair Buga to read it for us. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Code of Ethics. As an elected member of, board of, of the Board of Trustees, I will devote time, thought, and study to the duties and responsibilities of trusteeship so that I may render effective and credible service. I will recognize that the expenditure of school funds is a public trust, and I will support policies and practices which ensure that all such funds are expended efficiently, economically, and in the best interest of the students and electors of the division. I will endeavor to work with my fellow trustees in a spirit of harmony and cooperation in spite of differences of opinion that may arise during vigorous debate. I will avoid rancor and bitterness, observe proper decorum and behavior, encourage full and open discussions in all matters with my fellow members of the board. I will base my personal decision upon all available facts in each situation, voting my honest conviction in every case. I will do everything possible to maintain the integrity, confidence and dignity of the office of the school trustee, and I will resist every temptation and outside pressure to misuse my position as a trustee to benefit either myself or any other individual or agency. I will remember at all times that as an individual, I have no legal authority outside the meetings of the board unless the board has so delegated. My relationships with the school staff, local citizenry, and the media will be conducted on the basis of this fact. I will always bear in mind that the primary function of the board is to establish the policies by which the schools are to be administered and that the daily and that the daily administration of the educational program and conduct of school business shall be the responsibility of the superintendent and their staff. Therefore, I will refer complaints and other communications to the superintendent in accordance with policies and procedures approved by the board. I will earnestly attempt to promote goals based on the needs and aspirations of the community and do my best to support effective educational programs for the students. Now we move on to date and time, uh, date, time, place of regular meetings um, attached on the package. Um, purpose for approval motion is required. Would anybody like to speak to this or would you like me to? Recommended motion is the Board of Trustees approve the schedule of the public board meetings 24-25 as attached to the organizational meeting package with the September date change to September 25th, uh, 2024. And further, the public board meetings be held at the Frank Robinson Education Center in Mournville at 9 a.m. Trustee Gibbons? Just just a reminder or an awareness, September 25th, they have the board chair and Alberta education meeting. So you might want to change. So that you're able to attend that meeting. OK, recommended motion then that we move the September 20 or the September public board meeting to Monday, September 23rd, 2024, or alternately Thursday, September 26, 2024. Would anybody like to speak on that? Trustee Marie Elliott. Do I have to say my name? Um, either works for me, except I have a school council on the 23rd at 5.30, but I don't see that as a conflict. Thank you. Anybody else? Trustee Pequin. The date doesn't matter to me, 
I would like to see our meetings change to 9.30 a.m. because with traffic and winter and roads and I struggle to get here at 8.58, that little bit of grace and leeway would for sure make my life easier, but I can I, I can continue to struggle if it's everybody else prefers nine. Trustee Dwyer? I will not be able to attend on the 24th. 20, uh, 23rd or 26th? 20, oh, sorry, I thought you said the 24th too. Yeah, 23rd, 26th, fine. Okay, I actually would like to um, propose a change to the start time as well for the public board meeting. I would like it to start at 10 a.m. Um, uh, expectation is that trustees are still here at 9, um, but I would like a brief time prior to each of our public meetings uh, for um, discussion purposes. And and with that being said, the um, acknowledgement that 858 is uh, is hard, and so uh, we would provide Trustee Peckwin with the grace to get here safely. Trustee Buga? Um, just a question on the format of the, the pre-meeting, whether that's going to be open to the public or is this going to be a committee of the whole format, um, just for transparency for our constituents, whether they're wanting to know what we're doing. It will be a committee of the whole format. Anybody else have a thought or a comment? Trustee Mary, Mary Elliott. To enable Janine time to get here, the fact that it's a less formal, and if she's a few minutes late, would that work for? Trustee Peckwin. To settle my concerns, if it's not on camera, because I am sometimes walking in and the meeting has started and we're in a public forum and it's not the most professional and I try to be here on time, but kids and drop offs and all that makes it hard. So if it's not on a professional, like, so I would still say the meeting starts at 9 a.m., but the on camera portion public board agenda items start at 10. Right. So that way the expectation to be here at 9 a.m. is still here giving me the minute or two of grace because I can get organized while we're talking, but that the right so that the public time sensitive public board meeting on the agenda be at 10. And that's that's my hope is that the hour is spent as committee of the whole time. Um, any in camera items that must be discussed uh, could fit into that portion. I just believe that we need an hour of time pre going into public on camera uh, to have some conversation. So would not be on camera or would not be in cameras. No, would not be open to the public. Thank you. <laughs> Trustee Buga. Um, sorry, again, just for clarification purposes for that initial meeting with a committee of the whole um, format, which administration would be required to attend just I assume that they would also be wondering if they need to be in the room at nine or at 10. My hope and expectation is that the first 30 minutes will be seven trustees only. The second 30 minutes will be seven trustees and superintendent only. I'm sorry, but there's actually no motion on the floor. So the motion should have been made before discussion happened on this because the motion was not read out loud about the board meetings before discussion. So if somebody needs to read the motion and then read the discussion. Motion. You read the entire motion? Yes. Okay. Do we have that on there, Michelle? Okay. Any further discussion? Trustee Pequin. I don't know which policy it is, but I feel like I read it yesterday that there is a policy that the trustee shall not meet without an appropriate um, central office person. So, 
Okay. That first half an hour of just seven. I don't know, remember. I read it yesterday, though. If so I'm that... out of line, somebody call me on it. Yeah. Trustee Gibbons. I was just going to say, maybe we pause and we we look at policy or we look at the legislation um, just so that we we know going forward we're doing the correct thing. And absolutely. We can definitely do that. Um, alternately, I can request... Um, I can request an administration to be present, uh, potentially Miss Lisa Lacroix from Human Resources, um, if that would satisfy everybody's concerns. Trustee Buga? Um, then I would speak in favor of the motion that we approve public board meetings um, as the attached organizational meeting package with the September date changed to September 23rd. Um, and further, the public board meetings will be held at the Frank Robinson Education Center in Morinville at 10 a.m. Anybody want to speak further? Uh, yes, Superintendent of Corporate Services. Uh, yeah, just uh, policy um, 235 board operations. Um, point seven meetings of the board should not be had without the superintendent and or designate in attendance unless the superintendent's employment contract is being discussed. So just to advise you. Then we can discuss that further with um, the superintendent and possibly um, the associate superintendent of human resources as well. Rusty Pequin. So I would keep the start time at nine and then maybe add a sentence with the public on camera board meeting time sensitive at 10. Because it is it's a cow meeting. It's not public. Never mind. Striking that figure out the word smithing. OK. Trustee Gibbons. We'll need to call it something other than Committee of the Whole because Committee of the Whole is a public meeting. So even though it's not online, people can join. Okay, that would be fine. Do we have to come up with a name currently or can we wordsmith it out after the fact? And Trustee Briggs. Didn't um, Brian Callahan call it environmental scan? I'm pretty sure that at our retreat he... Uh, that's yeah. perfect. That's a perfect explanation of what I would like it to be. So oh, we can wordsmith it after. Um, I guess what I'm looking for, <laughs> we need it now in the motion. All right. Trustee Gibbons. Thank you, Chair. Because the, the motion, or, oh, no, never, my apologies. I don't think anybody said an amendment of, of it. So currently it just stands at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Well, the motion is nine. We need an amendment for 10. So, Associate Superintendent Corporate Services. Um, I just want to clarify any um, discussion that is not public would have to be in camera. So land legal labor. Um, technically, Committee of the Holes can are foipable. Anything you create, any reports, any kind of minutes are foipable. So just have to keep in mind that um, to discuss anything land labor illegal, it would have to go into camera. Okay, I think I have something that might satisfy this. Can we have the public board meetings held at Frank Robinson Center start at 10 a.m. and at 9 a.m. have um, the in-camera portion of said public meeting? So, I guess I worded that wrong. At nine, continue to have the board's meeting start at nine, but begin the public board meeting with an in-camera session. Could that work? Uh, Associate Superintendent, Corporate Services. Technically, yes, you would still have to go. You'd still have to be public to start the meeting, call it to order. Then you can move into camera. Um, and then identify when you're going to come out. But yes, land legal labor. Trustee Murray Elliott. I think the problem with that is 
we're just putting the in camera portion first and we're losing the environmental scan portion. Okay. Could we do a closed session environmental scan at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on board meeting, public board meeting days? I, depending on, I would probably say no, depending on, um, I'm not sure exactly what is meant by environmental scan. Um, so that may be something that may need some, honestly, some in-camera discussion. Um, I'm not sure. Trustee Gibbons? May I suggest to the chair, what if to, we we put the motion forward as it is with a 10 a.m. start, and then we can have further discussion if if it needs a motion for us to start at 9 a.m. for whatever you okay. your vision is, yeah. then then we can we can do that. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, so associate Superintendent Corporate Services. Um, can I make a suggestion just because I've seen it in the past? Um, some boards will start their committee level at 9 a.m. to maybe if there's things that get added um, that haven't had a chance for discussion um, to the PBM to share information, they'll do that and then they'll go into their PBM at 10 and then follow after they're done their public board meeting, they'll continue with their committee the whole. Now, I just want to outline that that is possible. Um, depending on what you're, I guess, discussing. Trustee Dwyer. Um, first of all, I like the idea, the, the sense I'm getting of it anyways. And then, but I think it's very important that we declare the meeting start at 10, public meetings start at 10, because then people are not getting on at nine and waiting an hour. But uh, and I think we can, in our first meeting, um, get a sense of that in our heads and we have a good discussion between 9 and 10 how to formally make that work. That and sounds good. Because it's kind of hitting us all here at once and yeah. uh, I think some thought to it. And you don't have an idea of my whole vision. Yeah, exactly. So, and we can yeah. spend that hour looking at the chair's vision of that and just to now, you know, now for now, make sure the public understands it starts at 10 o'clock. Okay, so would somebody like to read the motion again then? Can I amend your initial motion? Yes, you may. Trustee Pequin. To read that the Board of Trustees approved the schedule of public board meetings 2024-2025 as attached to the organizational meeting package with the September date changed to September 23rd, 2024, and further the public board meetings be held at the Frank Robertson Education Center in Mournville at 10 a.m. So there's two changes because you said September 25th, so changing it to September 23rd and 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Back to the original motion. We just voted. Hmm? Now we need a motion to. All right, so can I ask for a motion to prove? Prove the motion, the, the motion, please. Amended motion. Trustee Marie Elliott. I move that we approve the amended motion that was just read regarding the board schedule. All in favor? Carried unanimously. I will get better. <laughs> um, okay, so next we are on to trustee membership of committees. I don't know, what do we want to do with this this time? Can we go, can we go committee by committee? If you're looking to put your name forward, you'll just put your hand up. 
so, trustee, if you got, you've got a better idea. <laughs> um, well, I don't have to say my name, right? No. Um, I just wanted to briefly, before we begin this, we used to, um, when I had started, we also had policy advice, uh, advocacy, transportation, building and maintenance as part of this committee uh, membership. And in our last year, we did uh, combine all those into committee of the whole. And I just asked for a quick discussion um, on how we can make sure that those spaces are still reserved for discussion on policy and advocacy specifically, as that is a major part of our role as trustee. Um, I'm okay if it stays in committee of the whole, meaning that we are all members of that. Um, I just want to make sure that there's a, a discussion on what the format looks like, because I know that in the last year, we've heard around the table that some of that has been lost a bit in priority and whether we want to pull it back out into a smaller membership or keep it as committee whole. But I'd appreciate a discussion about that before we move into this, if you don't mind, if we have time. Absolutely, we have time, Trustee Peckman. Oh, I'm on for that discussion. So I think this year with the policy, especially if we're changing numbers over and we're rescinding and we're whatever, I would like to see policy committee pulled out. Whether it has to be in this motion or according to policy 230, you can, the board may, 2.2, you may establish additional committees, task groups, or any other structure um, as the, the mandate membership in term of such ad hoc committees. So we could do make it as an ad hoc committee for this year alone to try and get through the significant work of kind of revamping our policies. Because me, I'm going to spend a lot of time making sure that we have not taken anything out. So I feel like if we do it as an ad hoc committee, that gives us the option for this year to have a separate policy committee. And then hopefully moving forward, it can be back into the format we have it now once it's better organized. But I think there's a lot of big rocks and a lot of work to be done this year. And I would like to see that come to an ad hoc committee. And then still final approval would absolutely have to come to a public board. But that background work can be done as an ad hoc. Trustee Briggs. Um, I would like to go back to the format that we had a couple of years ago. I, I think we were very engaged as trustees when we had our committees. And like you said, have an ad hoc committee for people that would like to do more in depth with policy and a few other things. I, I, I would like to go back to that format. Can I clarify you'd like to go back to that format for all of the committees? Trustee Gibbons. I like the idea of policy um, and advocacy being um, on it, an ad hoc committee because they they are intensive. Um, just to clarify, it would be as previous policy committee, we would do the first and second reading, bring the third reading um, for full discussion to um, to the trustees at the public board okay um because th th those are our main roles i feel that we can get reports um at committee in the whole from transportation buildings and maintenance so we might want to well and we all need to be a part of um, we really all should be a part of the budget um conversation so to not have a separate finance and budget committee Anybody else have Trustee Pequin? Um, I think I, I don't know that advocacy has to be separate because I think if we pull policy out of the cow, we have significantly more time. I would not like to see building and transportation be separate. I like those updates to everybody. If under the circumstances we are getting a modernization or a new build, then I think the ad hoc option gives us that option to have that ad hoc building committee to oversee the extensive work that comes with modernizations new builds but as we don't have those right now i don't know that we need those at separate because building and maintenance i don't i don't know that that can't be 
committee of the whole same with transportation right but that policy if we pull that policy out i think we have an advocacy is in all of us and all of this is all of us so i would just like to see the policy pulled out as an ad hoc for this one year and leave everything else the same um i have a thought on this i i think it, it's i i would tend to agree with uh trustee pequin pulling policy out for the first two reads frees up a lot of time at committee of the whole I believe advocacy needs to stay with the group because advocacy applies to all of our other um, committees, whether it's transportation, building and maintenance, even policy. Um, that's something that we all have to be present and engaged in. Um, having that last third reading come to the board, I think will free up a lot of time in our committee of the whole schedule to actually communicate and discuss and put more time into the other parts of committee of the whole. Uh, would anybody like to, do we need a motion if we change this now? This is that, okay. okay. Does anybody else want to comment on that? I think the, I think that what I have distilled is policy committee comes out for two readings, comes back into committee of the whole for third reading. Trustee Marie Elliott. Um, just a little more specific. So would the co the policy committee have certain members that are on it with others can come if they want, but not really members? So, or, or how would that look in everyone's view? Uh, Trustee Pequin. So I think as of right now, we can pass the motion as it stands here at our first public board meeting in 25 minutes, we can add a motion onto the floor to create an ad hoc committee for policy. Of how many members? Three, with a quorum of two, and everybody can attend. Okay. Would be, that's the format we previously used, but as, as this stands, once we figure out who's going to be on these groups, we can pass this motion as stands, and then just add to our public board agenda to a motion to make the ad hoc committee. So it's not a permanent committee, it's just a one year term committee. Okay. Uh, Superintendent Warren. I would just recommend to the board that you pause, uh, not the meeting, but just to uh, look at the wording from policy 230, uh, just 2.2, just so you have the motion clear um, to move back to policy committee format. We don't need that until public, correct? If you're making a change, if you're adding members, you're not going to add any members now? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay. Right, but any ad hoc. Sorry, I'm just going to say, sorry. I'm just going to recommend to the board just to read it to make sure for your next steps that you're following your policy, just to make sure if you're adding policy back in that we just don't miss the motion. So it's policy, you're on the website, policy 230.2.2. Just in your own mind so that you're clear so that you know to Trustee put policy Peckman, back in place. Please read it. Does the board may establish additional committees, task groups, and or any other structures as deemed necessary by board motion? The mandate, membership, and term of such ad hoc committees, task groups, and or other structures shall be determined by board motion. So that board motion can be in a public board meeting in 30 minutes or at any time. Okay. And it's not needed to change this one, if I'm understanding that correctly. All right, so we're back to determining trustee membership of, oh, sorry, trustee Murray Elliott. Um, not sure if this fits under this or not. Usually the student advisory chair is the chair of the board. However, in the past that sometimes that has been delegated to another trustee so not sure if this would be the time and place to do that as well or if the chair wants to take that role or um the chair can take that responsibility i believe we can leave it as is all right We're all on the student advisory committee. Terms of reference, 230, appendix G. 
Thirty appendix G. We'll speed it up. Mm -hmm. I know, but I got D and then I got F. There's G. I can read it. Superintendent Warren's going to read the appendix G from policy 230. Yeah, it's just the terms reference. So um, it says um, this is for um, student advisory committee. So it's policy 230 appendix G. And it says that for the terms of reference, membership shall, shall consist of trustees, chair of the board or designate chairs the meeting, deputy superintendent and superintendent and then student representatives. OK, so it person can be designated so we can do that after. All right, so committee of the whole, we have all trustees. ATA negotiating negotiations committee. We need three trustees. I would like to continue to sit on that board. Um, so Tasha, anyone else? Trustee Briggs, we need a third. And Trustee Buga. And following uh, next, we have CUPE Negotiating Committee, Negotiations Committee. Oh, three people immediately. Um, I think it's recommended that the three people that we're on, because we're in active negotiations right now, continue to stay on. But oh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, that, that there is validity to that. Does anybody have any issues with the three members continuing? Those three would be? Those three would be Trustees Briggs, Trustees Dwyer, and Trustee Murray Elliott. Municipal Liaison Committee or? I'm following the list that I've got right here, so we might have to go back to the previous okay. list on the agenda, but okay. we'll get there. Um, and then Teacher Board Advisory Committee, TBAC. We need three trustees. Trustee Marie Elliott. Are these not usually the ATA negotiations committee members as well? No, it hasn't been in the past. We've had it. We've had a cross section, although generally one of them is. And I would like to put my name on this list if possible. And need two more, please. Trustee Pequin. One more. And Trustee Gibbons, thank you. Okay. Now, there are other boards, other committees. I know, but one like, One moment, please. Me where this stuff is because now my papers are all It's just those ones are just No, there's more. Is it makes sense? Yes. It's but are there others? Okay, so labor management. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. I knew there was one more. <laughs> labor management committee, um, QP. All right, so we have Trustee Marie Elliott, Trustee Dwyer, and Trustee Big Briggs. Is anybody else interested?
And can we look at special committees and task groups while we're talking here? Oh, the municipal liaison committee. Thank you. Municipal liaison committee, is anybody interested? Like the community. Trustee Briggs? Is that the community service advisory board? Is that where we're talking about? We don't know. We're just trying to, can, I, I'm not sure if that's that committee or if it's people who are sitting on rotary and, oh, no, because not rotary, right but um, well, community that's services. Why chamber. Rotary's here. 9.8. So what is this? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, we're just looking. Not sure if we have it. I think we're just like community service advisors. Yep, that's on nine. That's nine point eight. Mm -hmm. We just need a minute. You know, we'll Here. we'll come back. Yes, I, I'm, Dwyer. I'm pretty sure that we've uh, not had a municipal liaison committee before. Right. And we considered uh, nine point eight community service advisory representative sort of falls into that. Uh, yeah. So I'd advise that we, at this time, take the municipal aid uh, committee out of it and follow just 9.8 community services advisory representative. Yeah. That is correct. Of course, um, trustee or Thank you, Trustee Blair. You are exactly right, and that is correct. We haven't had it for a long time, and that is our mistakes administration. It should not have been on there. Okay, yeah. so we're going to go to 9.1 and work we're, down the list for anything. We're going to make a motion for eight oh, first. Oh, sorry, yes. Would somebody like to make the motion then? I move that the Board of Trustees approve the following membership committees for the 2024-2025 school year. Committee of the Whole, including all trustees, ATA Negotiations Committee, Trustee Outway McClay, Trustee Briggs, Trustee Buga, QP Negotiations Committee, Trustee Briggs, Trustee Dwyer, Trustee Murray Elliott, uh, TBAC Teacher Board Advisory Committee, Trustee Outway Oatway McClay, Trustee Pequin, Trustee Gibbons, and Labor Management Committee, Trustee Dwyer, Trustee Murray Elliott, and Trustee Briggs. Thank you, Trustee Bugo. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Number nine, board representatives to other organizations. Um, Alberta School Boards Association. We need one representative, one alternate representative. Um, Trustee Briggs. I would like to be the representative. And, okay. And Trustee Gibbons. I too would like to be the representative, but I'll be okay going as the alternate, um, having attended the, the meetings last year. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and Public School Boards Association of Alberta, one representative, one alternate. Trustee Murray Elliott. Um, I would like to continue on PSBAA, but I'm happy to go as alternate if someone would like to try to be the to be the rep. Uh, Trustee Briggs. Um, can I amend? I, I'm sorry. Trustee Gibbons, I would like you to be the Alberta School Board's representative because you were on it last year, and I could be an alternate if need be. Um, I would really like to do the public school board. Sorry. Sorry for the error. That's okay. And Trustee Buga? Um, I, I really enjoyed my time on both boards, so I'm happy to be the alternate on one of them. Um, doing both would be a substantial amount of work, unless you're okay with doing both. No, but I could be the alternate for ASBA. Works. All if right. If you want to do the Alberta School Board, that would be great. Okay. Thanks. All right. I just need clarification then. <laughs> Back to um, Alberta School Boards Association representative and alternate. Who is the rep? Good. Gib Trustee Gibbons, who's the alternate? Trustee Buga. And then we have PSBAA. The rep is Trustee Briggs. And the alternate is 
Trustee Murray Elliott. Uh, 9.3 TIBA representative. I would like to please be this again. Uh, Sturgeon Composite High School Council, School Council representative, alternating Trustee Dwyer. So um, I, I encourage anyone who wants to join me at any of the meetings to please do so. so yeah, so we just need a schedule of attendance. Do you guys want to alternate? Do you... I'll go every meeting. Okay. Trustee well, Dwyer. And, and previously they've, they've conflicted with Joe's. Others, yeah. so it depends what days the meetings fall on. It seems that every year, mm -hmm. every year the new councils choose a different date. Trustee Dwyer? Yeah, I, I, I should be careful with that because uh, my Camilla has the same date as the high school. So even though I'd be alternating, I'd probably, my number one priority would be Camilla. Okay, so then why don't we say Trustee Murray Elliott is the rep for Sturgeon Comp and Trustee Dwyer? along with the rest of us can be back up and I see Steve, Trustee Buga's hand up. Um, just note that I also attend most of them as I have a student at the comp, uh, but I do appreciate having Trustee Murray Elliott take the lead as the trustee so that I can uh, lean a little bit more on my parent side when I'm at those meetings as data collection and not information right. sharing. Perfect. So. Okay, we got the comp in good Teamwork. hands here then. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Is anybody have any other comments? All right, 9.5, Sturgeon Public Virtual Academy School Council Representative, Trustee Buga. I would appreciate, I mean, I would love to have other people there. I know that um, Trustee Gibbons had attended a meeting or two last year, um, which I think is really important for everybody to understand what uh, the alternate learning schools in Sturgeon look like and what they're their priorities are and what they're up to, uh, but I would very much like to stay on as they navigate changes and um, make sure that we're on pace. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Buga. Um, student discipline committee is as required. We are all familiar with how that works. Uh, 9.7, Mournville Sturgeon Rotary representative, Trustee Dwyer. Thank you very much. I would be pleased to continue that. I totally enjoy that committee. So, Well, then we want to uh, help you with that. Yeah, and just on that, I think we're moving in big ways of Rotary with our schools. So um, actually, I'll, I'll talk about it. Yeah, I think it's a huge benefit for you to stay. And Trustee Buga? Thank you. Um, just out of curiosity, as um, I've never been to a Rotary meeting, I know that membership is generally required to attend the meetings, and I know that we pay for one. Are other trustees able to attend occasionally as, you know, a drop-in person if we want to? Yes, for sure. Awesome. For sure. Just give you You just can't vote. Okay. That's basically anybody, can, well, not anybody, but. It's open to the public. It's open yeah. to the public. And, and uh, voting is just for, for members. Awesome. Trustee Paxson. We do have on our sheet, and it historically has always been a rotation, except for the last, like the first term, it was a rotation of trustees, so that if anybody else wanted to go, because we had a few who wanted to go, that they rotated out. So, I mean, I don't see, I'm not trying to take it away, but if anybody else wants to go, I feel like it would be fair opportunity to allow a rotation out. If I don't want to do it, I don't want to be in Mournville at 7 a.m., please, I am not speaking for me. But if anybody else, I think we should allow that. I definitely think that we can uh, accommodate that. Uh, Trustee Dwyer, are you still on the board of the Rotary? Yep. Okay, so that would... And I'm on the board as past president. That's yeah, correct. okay. So we can definitely accommodate that then. And then 9.8, Community Services Advisory Representative. Ah, oh, Trustee Briggs, thank you. 
Okay, can I get a motion for those um, to be accepted by the board? Trish, uh, Trustee Murray Elliott, thank you. I move that the Board of Trustees approve the following board representatives to other organizations for the 2024-2025 school year. Um, ASBA, Trustee Gibbons is the rep, alternate Trustee Buga. PSBAA, Trustee Briggs is the rep, alternate Trustee Murray Elliott. Uh, TIBA representative, Trustee Oatway McClay. Uh, Sturgeon Comp High School, Trustee Murray Elliott and Trustee Buga slash Dwyer. Uh, Sturgeon Public Virtual Academy School Council, Trustee Buga. Uh, Student Discipline Committee, uh, trustees will rotate attendance, a quorum of two. Morinville Sturgeon Rotary Representatives, uh, rotation of Trustee Dwyer and any other trustee who would like to attend. And Community Services Advisory Board, Trustee Briggs. Trustee Peckman. Just for clarity, ASBA zone two, three. Sorry. ASBA, our board chair is always the representative. Zone two, three is where we, so just to clarify that. Sorry, if we Thanks. could amend the motion to include zone two, three after ASBA. Thank you for the clarification. Um, all in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. And that concludes the organizational meeting of September or August, rather, 28th, 2024. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Irene, oh. Trustee Gibbons. Sorry, I thought we were voting. Uh, I, uh, I make the motion to adjourn the right. organizational meeting. All in favor? Carried unanimously.
Can somebody read the? Okay. All right. Perfect. So we just have to call. Okay. So I would like to call the public board meeting of August 28th, 2024 to order at this time. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Trustee Murray Elliott. I approve the agenda uh, for the board meeting of August 28th. Okay, and can I have an approval of the minutes? Oh, sorry, all in favor. <laughs> Carried unanimously. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the June 19th meeting? Trustee, Trustee Dwyer? Trustee Dwyer, are you going to make the motion? Oh. Sorry. I have a motion to approve of the minutes for the June. What was the date? Sorry, guys. 19th. June 19th meeting. All in favor? Very unanimously. Um, any business arising from the minutes? Any presentations or delegations today? No. Uh, action items 6.1 Jupa Governance Clause Recommendation. Superintendent Warren. Thanks, Chair. I will turn this over to the Associate Superintendent of Corporate Services. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, so the report here just outlines currently we are uh, in the works of uh, two joint use planning agreements, um, trying to get a base, one with the City of St. Albert. Um, which includes the city of St. Albert, uh, Greater St. Albert Roman Catholic, the Francophone um, Division, uh, St. Albert Public, as well as ourselves, um, and then the town of Warrenville, which includes the town of Warrenville, uh, Greater St. Albert Roman Catholic, and ourselves. Um, just bringing forward to the board that uh, in those discussions, um, there, there are a few templates that have were created for the um, joint use agreements. Um, in those discussions, um, they, it was determined that everybody doesn't want a, um, it's called a governing committee and essentially it's just kind of putting in, um, establishing meeting dates, um, with either council members and, uh, trustees and things like that to discuss issues. Um, it is seen essentially that once the agreement is put into place, that is approved by the council members and the trustees. Um, that administration should be able to enact it and then escalate that if needed to the board. Um, I have included some samples of the governing um, committee examples as well as some alternative solutions, not saying those are for sure what will be in there. Um, it has been advised to me that if we do want to move forward with um, the governing committee that the other school boards um, essentially don't want as part of their agreement. I'm not sure how it's going to work with the St. Albert one, because that is a rather large agreement that has a lot of people working together. Um, not including this, so I want to bring this forward just because in your current joint use agreements, um, it does have committees listed and meeting. I think the only one that meets regularly is uh, Bon Accord um, with Trustee Briggs here. The other ones don't. Um, and again, it's just um, to kind of help if there are issues that administration should deal with them first and then escalate them up to the board eventually if. Um, things aren't working and essentially change the agreement um, in essence if it's not working. So, yeah. Any questions? Trustee Dwyer? Just just for my per, um, help and understanding, Jupa, or when it's organized, it's for the bigger organizations. I'm, I'm thinking like, I think, I'm thinking the Bon Accords and the River Cabars of the world are kind of outside of that. Um, it's for any municipality, so you have to have a joint use agreement established with any uh, municipality as per the um, Education Act and the Municipal uh, Government yeah. Act. So the mail and River Cabar wouldn't be a municipality. No, because those are the county. So it would be just uh, the uh, the JUPA would be underneath Sturgeon. And if we want a user kind of agreement with the others, that's a separate thing in business. Yep. Okay, I just want to be clear on that because. 
when we talk Jupiter, it makes it sound like we're talking those too, and it's not. Okay. Uh, Superintendent Warren. Yes, thank you, uh, Trustee Dwyer. It's very good to clarify because, again, just to remind the board that JUPAs are the responsibility of the municipalities, right? It's driven from the Municipalities Act, um, and so you are correct. So it is, uh, again, it has to, it's on the municipalities that they must create these, um, and it's joint use and planning agreement is what it stands for. Trustee Marie Elliott. Sorry, this is, I still, I'm a bit anxious about because we're in the city of St. Albert and these are now planning agreements and we know that St. Albert will not plan to give us any land for new schools or anything of that effect. I just wonder how, how we are affected. Um, do we current, I, I don't believe we currently have a joint use where they allow us access to service center or anything like that. So um, I'm also a bit concerned about giving use of our one school in St. Albert to the city when they have many other schools. Um, it is in our policies that use of, of this school external of school hours would pr be prioritized to residents before um external groups so i just would like administration to keep an eye on that as being the concern of of the board if they're the ones i really don't see the use of having a governing committee for that for a jupa with saint albert i i can't see any purpose in that uh associate superintendent of corporate services Thank you, board chair. Um, yes, and those agreements will be brought forward for you to take a look at, um, but I will definitely keep that in mind. Thank you. Trustee Briggs. Um, I am a little concerned with the wording of the motion. Um, basically, trustees are somewhat being left out of their community that they represent. And I think that is our job as trustees as we were voted in to represent our communities. So I am a little concerned that the trustees are only going to be. Um, it'll only be escalated to the board as needed, and I think our job as trustees is to represent our communities. Trustee Buga. Thanks, I, I appreciate that um, Trustee Briggs, because that is, you know, <laughs> That relationship between municipalities and the schools is, you know, we do sit in that a lot. But I think that having the board as that top level of disputes, if we are part of the decision making, we can't be, we can't also be the the top level if something goes wrong. And I think that's our role. Um, I would like to just ask um, to trust you, Marie Elliott's point. Is there? The school principals, are they part of the, the discussions? Like, is there um, representation from the actual schools? Because sometimes at central office, they may not understand the nuances going on specifically in that type of situation. If you could just let me know. Sorry, Sean Nicholson, Associate Superintendent, Corporate Services. I've got to get back into that. Um, so, yes. Um, my practice has always been to share with the principals for feedback and comments um, and any input they might have. Um, I did do that with the, uh, the town of Warrenville one um, as well as work through some issues. I just want to also highlight that this isn't saying you can't meet with the municipalities or whatever. You can still do that. You can still book that anytime. You can still represent your communities, have those conversations um, and have those discussions. It's not limiting that. It's just, yeah. Trustee Pequin. Well, I think part of the problem is we have never seen a JUPA. These are new. They're on the municipality to provide or to work with us. So the uncertainty of what even is it? What's going to be on this? Do we have a role to play? <laughs> because we don't know what it is. So having not seen it, which you guys are working on it, I will fully take your advice. And I agree with Stacy that you can't be the appeal if you're part of the process. 
and like you said, Sean, it doesn't take away from the advocacy part where we meet with our municipalities. The joint planning agreements were great because it forced us to meet. So we have to make a concerted effort as a board to still meet with our partners in municipalities in Sturgeon County and and all of the other school boards. And we don't need this Jupa because we don't know what it is. If it doesn't have a place in there, it doesn't have a place. That's fine, but that the onus is on us then to be proactive and meet with our municipalities because we don't fit in the Jupa anymore, except for a. So I don't, I didn't really add any thoughts, but that's my it's it's the unknown is what's. I have one quick question: Who sits at the table to discuss these? What level of um, administration and or government? Um. So it would be similar roles as mine um, through the other divisions, um, as well as for the town of Morinville, it's um, their community service advisor person and they bring in people as needed. So um, essentially their facilities team um, to come in and provide input on the schedules. It, it's a very large group of different people. Um, I personally then take that back and obviously I'll bring it to the board as well, but I take it to the principals to ask them for any feedback. I like to um, be the middleman in that too, so that because principals do live in our communities and if they have concerns, I don't want that to damage any relationships. So um, I personally take on that burden to be that middleman to try and work that through. Okay, so then the way I'm seeing it is, um, and the way it was always taught to me is that if if you are communicating on a subject and it's like elected official to elected official, then board members are to be present. But if we're talking admin level to admin level, then the information should just be brought back to us as, as simply that information. So, all right, thanks so much. Appreciate that. Any other communications on this or discussion rather? Could I have somebody make the motion? Trustee Gibbons. I make the motion that the Board of Trustees approve the use of a joint use planning agreement without the governing committee and that any issues arising from the agreement will be dealt with first between administration staff and then escalated to the board as needed. I'm going to vote in favor of this motion. Um, it's a clear process of if administration isn't able to come to agreement, it would come to the board level. Um, I feel it's a, at an operational level, and then if it, it needs to be lifted, it will move up. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, okay, unanimous. Do you have a question or is that your vote? I had a question before we... All right, so for Michelle, are you in favor or not in favor? Through for the vote? Talking to you. Okay, unanimous. That's on the Jupa. Yes, on the All right, on to number seven, administration reports. Superintendent Warren. Oh, sorry, there is a question, Trustee Briggs. Uh, Sorry, Chair. Um, I have no power. My computer is completely shut down and I don't know what's going on. So I can't follow the meeting. I have no power. I have full power, so I can plug. I have no power. <laughs> and mine is plugged in. It says mine's charging. Is that right? That little plug in me? Well, plug yeah, it? like, okay. yeah. I got it. I got power. Can you me? Want me to share my paper printout? I have no paper printout. I can try. I'll reach you. So, thank you. It should be in here. I don't have any for this meeting. I don't know. Like I said, everything got moved. I don't know. Yeah, when we moved you. Yeah, well, here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Don't, we don't have to pick it up together. I don't, that's why I like having it down there. I just tick it off. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. you're right here. Are you okay, are you Trustee yeah. Briggs? Yeah. Okay, are you connected? Can you see the agenda now? Yeah. Okay. 
She's not gonna, she's gonna see a bunch of me. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're moving to 7.1 Pembina Pipeline Corporation grant, uh, turning it over to Superintendent Warren. Thank you, Chair. Um, just sharing his information, um, all of last year, um, we worked very hard to uh, try to submit uh, applications for multiple, um, through multiple avenues um, to try to get additional funds um, for, uh, to support feeding students in our schools, um, just due to the rising cost of food and the number increase in the number of students as accessing food. So uh, to date, we have been, like I said, we've been did that over the course of last year. And um, we are excited to announce that um, Pembina actually um, has approved our grant application. Uh, it is for our Redwater and Oka Park schools only, and that they will be administering the grant through the Breakfast uh, Club of Canada. The funds will be uh, dispersed between these two schools to enhance their existing programs. Um, I cannot speak specifically to the number yet because we don't have it formalized. But once that is done, we will be sure to follow board policy about recognizing those companies uh, that do uh, donate. Um, the schools are very excited because it's um, going to very much help enhance their current um, um, food programs. Any questions, Trustee Dwyer? Um, that, I mean, that's great news. How does that affect our federal grant for uh, foods and schools? Does that adjust theirs in any way and more to others or just stays the same? Or Superintendent Warren? Uh, good question, Trustee Dwyer. So there is no federal um, nutrition grant, but the provincial one that we've been getting or provincial, um, for the last six or seven years now, that was basically three schools. Um, Bonacourt, Oak Park had full um, breakfast programs and um, Morinville Public had a supplemental lunch uh, program or enhanced lunch program. Uh, no, it does not impact any additional funding we get is totally separate from that. So um, we continue to get Alberta Ed uh, funding for nutrition, and that is the only grant we have right now. All of our schools, as we did talk about last year, they access multiple ways of um, uh, getting donations for food, et cetera. And our goal was uh, when we were looking last year was to try to get more funds for across our schools. Um, and this is the one that we heard back from, but it does not impact our Alberta Ed funding. Um, do you need a follow up? Yeah, Steve you, that, maybe I'm misunderstanding because um, I do know at Camilla that they got a certain amount of money. I thought it was from a federal grant that was announced. Um, and they talked about it there because uh, the, the parent council paid for the some snacks and all that for kids at home. And it came out as there was a budget item. And I, and I remember on the news that the federal government put a bunch of money out for, and it was kind of small at our level, but it got us a little bit. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it. Uh, Superintendent Warren? Um, so federal government has thrown that out in some ways, but there is no official. It has never trickled down into our schools. All of our schools, um, and we can clarify that, uh, Trustee Dwyer, we can bring that back to you, but we did ask uh, when we were... Um, gathering information from all of our schools because we asked the question where are you getting funding from to support your um to feed students and a lot of it is your school councils or your um, parent fundraising groups that are doing that but there's also multiple in our schools were really much um very di diverse so we can clarify where they got that from but the federal dollars for a grant even though they have stated it's out there we have not received any federal dollars for additional uh, nutrition funding uh, Trustee Briggs and then Trustee Buga. I just have two questions. So one of them is I just want to have some clarity. So Pemina is a huge supporter of the Breakfast Club of Canada. So is this a separate grant or is this grant coming from the Breakfast Club of Canada? Superintendent Warren? Um, as um, stated in uh, the memo, it is from Pemina. They are administering it through the Breakfast Club of Canada. So it is not from the Breakfast Club of Canada, but the guidelines that we will have to follow are the guidelines um, laid out by the Breakfast Club of Canada. Okay. So Pembina is sponsoring this, it's their dollars, okay. and they're funneling it through the Breakfast Club of Canada. So originally when the grant first came into the division, it was Bonacourt School and Ochre Park School. Um, so now the provincial grant that is being divvied up between the three schools in our division is the one from Ochre Park now being given to another school in the division. Superintendent Warren. Uh, sorry if I wasn't clear when I first said it. This is not impacting any of the current. This is in addition to. So no, they currently have that. This is in addition to. 
Trustee Buga? Um, this seems like a topic where there's a lot of uncertainty of what currently exists. Um, and I know I was going to ask about, there was a press release early summer, I believe, maybe end of June, um, where the, the province had had said that there aren't any restrictions on the nutrition grants based on socioeconomic conditions or status of schools and that kind of thing. Um, but I know that that's, that was what was implied um, previously was that it was specifically for targeted interventions. Um, so maybe in the future, we could ask administration to come with a report of exactly what were, what the grants are. I feel like the province may have adjusted things a little bit. Um, and from what I was looking into of the federal um, high level announcements that they tend to make without real background, that was going to be given to provinces to give out and whether has that been an addition that the province is now putting out or is that just the same money that they're, you know, sometimes it's like politicians like to bring up things that they're already doing as though it's something new, but maybe it's not, or maybe there's just been a slight change in how it's done. Um, so perhaps going forward, we could ask administration if that's the will of the board to get that information. So we make sure we've got equity amongst our schools. And trustees, trust, uh, Superintendent Warren, sorry. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, uh, the budget that was passed that had the nutrition grant line from Alberta Ed, nothing has changed. So that nothing has changed. Um, any uh, additional information that we get, we will bring forward. But again, this is a supplemental um, program. Um, and the reason I'm bringing it forward is because in the policy, the board is very clear that when we get big donations, um, that it is brought forward and we will be celebrating that um, to acknowledge that. Um, but nothing has changed since the budget was passed and that line is in there about the nutrition grant and it is still clearly there for the three schools that qualify. Okay. So, yeah, I think a, maybe just a summation of who's getting what from where would be helpful. And I'd like to just um, express the board's heartfelt gratitude and thanks to Pembina Pipelines for supporting our communities in this way. Um, Obviously, without them, we can't do the things we need to do and we can't uh, expect our students to be successful. So thank you to Pembina Pipelines. Sorry, could I just ask for clarification? Is that the will of the board? Is that a report that I am bringing back? I would like a motion and a vote on that if you want a full report on um, what schools, where they're getting their um, any type of grants or additional funds from. Would anybody like to put forward that motion? Uh, Trustee Murray Elliott. Um, I move that the administration uh, provide the board with some information on where the nutritional grants that we are receiving are coming from and how they're being divided and allocated. All in favor? Uh, five, six, four, one. Anybody against? Opposed? One opposed? Uh, Trustee Peckman, is that a question or opposition? A question. Question. Okay. Not a question, a comment, because I missed it. Um, I just really, really want to thank Pamela because as somebody who lives in that community, that makes a huge difference that we don't have hungry kids going to school or they're, they're able to be taken care of at the school. So as a representative of Redwater, like just my heartfelt thanks to providing for the kids in the town I live in and but for one of our schools it's it's amazing and I am so grateful and thankful all right moving on to 7.2 summer school enrollment summary uh, who would like to superintendent Warren please Thank you, Chair. I will turn this over to the Deputy Superintendent. And we had a successful summer school again, and I will let him give some highlights from the report. Thank you. Provided for the board's information is a high level summary of another successful uh, summer school edition here at Sturgeon Public Schools. Uh, you'll notice the phys ed program continues to be popular. We're very thankful we were able to add a cohort because it filled up rather quickly, and this way we were able to. Um, meet the needs as expressed by our community. 
Uh, you'll notice enrollment is up. I do want to call out, there should have been an asterisk in the report with the credits earned because some of the credits, that's not a finalized number. If you look at the credits this year, you might see, well, students are up and courses are up, but credits seem pretty on par with last year. And I talked with the uh, principal uh, this year why this number is what it is and and they indicated that they're reporting what has been successfully earned but there may be some work experience credits and whatnot that are yet to be successful and recorded so that number may change if you see it on a, a future report other than that uh, per, uh, willing to take um, questions uh trustee buga uh just a a quick comment um as i have <laughs> I have relationships with lots of kids going into grade 10 who were very appreciative of the uh, PE course. Getting the PE 10 in this fashion was really dynamic and really spoke volumes about the, the way that we're supporting education for, for students. Um, so I got some fantastic feedback from the kids in the program. So it's a great job to to everyone for for getting that extra cohort out there and making that available. Thank you. 7.3 communications report report July and August. Superintendent Warren. Oh, I was on. Thank you, Chair. I will also turn this over to the deputy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Provided uh, for the board's information, it's a little different format, but you'll notice the uh, focus of much of the work for communications through summer is in uh, support of our schools, in uh, looking forward that type of setup so schools are able to um, more easily and successfully promote their pro programs and activities into the community. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, we had a very successful uh, promotion uh, of uh, one of our schools, Guthrie School, uh, a gem right there against the base, uh, and, uh, and we were able to welcome many more families due to some uh, pretty significant efforts. So uh, administration prepared to take questions to the report. I, I have a comment. I was so excited this summer when I saw the signs and heard the radio ads for Guthrie. I just couldn't believe it. And given that that was such a big topic of discussion at our last parent council there. Um, just seeing this just makes my heart full and I can't wait for the parent council to to share the excitement and the and the joy in our successes. So thank you for that. And Trustee Buga. Um, thank you again for this report. Um, just because I the way I am um, just curious for the goals. Um, I believe in last at this time last year or early in the, the school year was when the goals um, were created for the communications. And I'm just curious whether these goals are going to be updated based on kind of where we're at today because things do change and if our priorities are going to change. And if so, is there an opportunity that um, through Committee of the Whole or our advocacy, if we have an ad hoc or anything like that, could be part of the, those goals to make sure that aligns with what the goals of the board are and our education plan altogether, just to be part of that communication. Because with election coming up, I do believe that it's really important that the school division on a whole support the role of trustees and governance and how public schools differ from some of the other options in Alberta and so I would just like to discuss that a bit with our communications team to maybe it's not maybe it's not a priority you know one to five goal but maybe it needs to be there in the background but I'd like to have those conversations with the communications team if possible if if the board um, agrees that we should be in that world thanks superintendent Warren uh, we did not have the goals for the year on this one because, again, this was the org meeting and public board meeting, so that will be coming. And um, if the board is wanting that to see um, what the draft ones are and compare it to your vision, mission, and values, et cetera, and your goals, um, we can bring that to the CAL before um, to finalize it and bring you the draft um, to the CAL if that is, that can look around to know if that is the board. I'm sure you need that, you should have that by motion if that is the goal of the board that you would like to see the draft. Um, your plan for communications. If we could just have a motion and then we will bring it to a cap. Trustee Buga. 
I move that administration bring the communication goals for the 2024-25 school year to the appropriate committee of the whole meeting for review. Can I get a vote on that? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Uh, Trustee Gibbons. Thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to say if the chair can uh, pass along to the communications um, team that it, I, I only do Facebook as far as social media goes, uh, but it was really nice to see that the communication about the division didn't stop over summer. So it kept plugging and plugging. And then when school was coming closer, then you saw more of the, the schools individually. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, moving on to 7.4, superintendent's discretionary fund. Superintendent Warren. Um, thank you. So um, it has been a school year. The budget was passed in May. And so um, just to remind the board that um, the funds that were part of the superintendent discretionary, this is to support the schools after there's any um, pressing issues um, that they to support our students and be in the best interest of students. If there's any um, pressures that these dollars be used that just to support directly our schools. So since the budget was passed, uh, the following uh, dollars have been allocated uh, to two schools. So first of all, the additional administrative allowance um, to add a second vice principal at four wins to support the growing population and the complexity um, to, of students and to ensure student success. And then 0.17 FTE, um, teacher FTE, uh, for learning support um, allocation to support complex um, student needs. And as discussed as part of the budget, the LSL uh, role, there is a formula for that based on the number of IPPs or students that require additional supports so that that teacher can support the role of behavior plans, um, individual um, planning documents, and any type of other plans um, to support the teachers in that role. Questions or comments regarding this report? Okay. Um, moving forward, 7.5 superintendent's report. Superintendent Warren. Again, provided as information for the board. Any questions or comments? Trustee Murray Elliott. Uh, once again, thank you to the superintendent. I really enjoy this report as it keeps us um, filled in on what's going on. Um, the one thing that really uh, twigged my interest was the um, work to resolve several concerns raised by parents and stakeholders and uh, addressing these issues. So it would be interesting to hear a broad nature of what some of these concerns were and how they were addressed. Was it like busing or classroom supports or? Um, it's just dealing with stakeholder concerns. Again, our schools were closed, so it makes it so central office is dealing with that. A lot of it is non-residents families that would like to come to our division. Um, so with the change in that, and so most of it was around that was non-residents. And if they were, you know, wanting to attend our school, some of them need some explanation to say, well, Education Act is clear. You actually are not our non-resident. And um, if we do not have the resources in our schools, so most of it was that. But anything else to support our schools because our um, ATA staff is on holidays. And so that falls on us as a senior admin team to support any of those concerns that normally would go down to the school level. Trustee Pequin. I really appreciate this report to see just education things going on. I really like the coming up at the week at a glance, like the upcoming events that you added this last one. I uh, sometimes get lost in the shuffle of life. So as a parent, that was really helpful to me. And as a trustee, that's really helpful. Like, this is what's, so I like that. But I like the whole report. Trustee Buga. Thank you. Um, unsurprisingly, I really appreciate the book list. <laughs> um, I think that's great. And if anybody is so inclined to listen to audiobooks or or read some of these. I think it's a great way to have us all speaking the same language and understanding where we're at because there's a lot of governance books, uh, but they don't always speak exactly the same way. And seeing what our, our superintendent has been kind of absorbing and seeing where that's at can sometimes help conversations when when we have that understanding. So I appreciate you sharing 
a bit of your kind of personal <laughs> reading list there. Thanks. Yes, we were reading some of the same stuff over the summer. I highly recommend the um, Imperfect Board Member. It was really good. Um, and that's saying something for a governance book. I'll, I also wanted to just uh, ask quickly, how did the roadshow, the senior admin roadshow go? That is a great question. I felt like I was Michelle Dick because in, you guys probably haven't heard the pin story, but Michelle Dick in the day would uh, go out on the roadshow and hand out the sturgeon pins to new staff. And she always thought these were coveted pins. And then somebody burst her bubble to let her know that actually there's thousands of them and they just get handed out all the time. So it's kind of sad when we burst your bubble. So anyway, it was lovely. I think our staff truly appreciated. Um, as you know, we've um, really dedicated a lot of time and resources to um, our TCIS. And uh, I think that our staff, we always uh, um, look at our uh, feedback from staff on every year. You see it too, their feedback on professional development and the start of the school and what they value. And it was very clear they want to be in schools getting ready because it's a lot. And because we were requiring it's a full day of TCIS training, if we had to pull them out, it would have been a, more time out of the classrooms. And so it was great. We went around. The schools looked bright and shiny. And yes, and so I did. Oh, yes. And then I have to tell you, here's a really funny story. Um, it was a teacher, I think, in second or third year. I started this pin story. And uh, this young teacher says, well, I was on White Ave at a thrift store and I purchased one of those vintage, <laughs> vintage, we were called vintage, sorry, vintage pins. I purchased one. And so it was like, wow, well, we're really excited. I guess people do like pins. So uh, it was uh, very fun. But staff, they were, they're all excited to bring, to uh, welcome back our families and our kids. And and uh, it went very well. And I think it was a efficient way to put our uh, names to our faces and go around and be brief with staff and then let them get back and get ready for, for the school year. And especially, as you know, we have new APs and also that and new curriculum, et cetera. So it's a lot of heavy stuff coming. So we wanted to uh, value their time. And I think they appreciated it. I guess we'll hear back from them this year when we ask. But um, I think it was well received. And thank you for asking. I remember the vintage pins from many, many moons ago. Michelle Dick gives them out to all of the new staff. And she was making a big deal of this at, at Nemeo one year. And she's like, Tasha Oatway McClay, do you think we made a good choice in hiring you? I'm like, well, I kind of think so. And Kyle Swenson literally fell off of his chair laughing. So I, uh, I do have vintage pins. So I'm glad it went well, and I'm glad that they they got back to doing what they needed to do. Uh, 7.6, Administrative Procedure 901, Student Conduct. Superintendent Warren. Thank you, Chair. So all of this was shared with the board um, two weeks ago, and when I sent it out um, to the board, if you look at all of our APs, um, with the changes, just with the new ministerial order coming out. We felt that it was in the best interest of our students and our schools to set the year up for success. And I think if you were to listen to the news, I think most school divisions in the province are doing that because it's very hard to shift partway through the year. So I hope that the board took the time to look through and read them and understand because there's a lot. Uh, we also, as you know, we had updated AI and we also put in even more information about AI. And um, we there was hours and hours spent in this over the summer. We gathered feedback from other people also, but we wanted to make sure that the viewers were ready to go. Uh, with these being administrative procedures, just so you are also aware, we when we discussed it at our first admin council, which was uh, last Friday, we also said to our principals, you know, um, this is also for you to start because the biggest part in here is the um, progressive discipline around that that's in the ministerial order. And it won't be the same for all schools. Our schools are very different. And so, um, We've asked the principals, you know, you're going to live this, we're going to work with this. And and there might be feedback back to us that some things we may have to shift the AP and we will base that, of course, on our feedback from the schools. And I'll just give a broad example of that. One is YouTube. And so when we were looking at what social media could or could not be accessed, and I might turn this over to um, Deputy Superintendent if he wants to speak more to it, but um, because of Google Classroom and how teachers will either use a, a YouTube video of how to do something that they post in a Google Classroom. If that's restricted, 
now we have to say, well, then kids wouldn't be able to ask that it was in a lesson. So um, this is why some of these may shift a little bit. We will bring, of course, all changes to you, but um, I hope that you took the time because there's a lot and our schools, that's what they've been doing. They've been spending a lot of time reading them, unpacking that, going through their staff. And now we're working on communication to parents. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any questions, like I said, I did give you time and same thing for input back here. If the board has things, um, and this is the AP, of course, this is just 901. Questions, comments, uh, Trustee Buga, then Trustee Murray Elliott. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of this is pulled from the mandates from the province, uh, but just curious, the term student, children and students is used in a few of the points. And I'm just curious, is that our term? Is there a circumstance where a student or a child is not a student who these rules would apply to? Yes, in the Education Act, it's the age of the student. So the age of a student, we don't say like a child is your kid. kindergarten, right? They're not considered because it's not mandatory mm -hmm. education. So until it's mandatory, children. they are called its children. You may provide programming to children than the Education Act by an age, like grade one age, basically it's six, whatever it is, then they are called a student. And so that's why we had to say both because they're in our schools, children and students. Perfect. Thank but you. Right and question. my second question is, I know that um, I've heard some parent concerns in the past about it, um, but it popped out is in 12 is where we're looking at the, the progressive discipline. There's no there's no specification of when a parent is notified or uh, involved in the process. Um, and I have heard anecdotally that sometimes, you know, parents don't find out things that, yes, the discipline has been started and they didn't know about it. Um, and that kind of thing. I'm wondering if in the AP, if there was a clear point of this is when parents are notified and how, or if that's a something that might be useful just from the parent side of things they should be part of we really i know there's a section in there about parents responsibilities of participating in their their child's behavior and this might just be a good spot to make sure that across the board this is how administration is expected to communicate thanks superintendent warren thanks and it's a great point trust Buga. and so just to let the board know with progressive discipline, because of our schools that we are pre-K all the way to grade 12, we're very different. We are leaving that. That's why our um, leaders right now are working really hard on updating their handbooks, et cetera, because that's on the school. And so if, if those type of things are coming up at school council, the parents should be bringing that up to make sure that it's clear because that should be in the school level handbook. Um, and we did not want um, to make it too strong and upper handed because it takes away the autonomy of the principal. And in a K to four school, it's very different than uh, in a you know five to nine or in the or in the high school in a ten to twelve or in a five to twelve. It's very different. So we wanted our schools to live in this and to see because they asked the same questions. Some of them were like, well, we kind of like that the APs were stronger, but other principals don't. And so we asked them to take this time because this is our grace period right now because it has to be in place by January 1st to take this time and we will use admin council to come back and forth. They will get input from parents. Um, but if parents, same thing, if that's a stakeholder concern, they need to take it to the principal, to the school to discuss, to say, we don't feel it's clear enough uh, as to where when parent communication um, comes into play. Um, I just had one comment um, and regarding 7.3. <clears throat> Uh, the comments around AI and just concerned and I know that this is a trial run for a couple months but I'm I just want to express my concern that there is no solid way of accurately detecting AI and its uses in documents it's at best I think I heard 63.1 percent accurate which leaves a lot of room for inaccuracy so I just wanted on public note that I have concerns regarding that one. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Uh, could I just, sorry. Superintendent Warren? Yeah, Chair, could I, could I just ask for clarification? If you, we've had a lot of AI, so um, because you will note um, in, when we get into the other APs more specifically about AI, 
it is expected that it is acknowledged AI is here and we're working with it and working alongside. It's growing so hard and so fast. So there is no turning a blind eye. It's here and we are have the you know, read in there just about AI, just even for staff. Um, that it is here and now and our, our teachers, we're trying to empower them to use it and also empower our students to use it. But again, we have to do that ethically and then to support them to be critical thinkers. So it is uh, AI is also a moving target. We have uh, made uh, great um, connections with other school divisions and we are working alongside them to because um, it's changing all the time. Um, but we have to embrace it and support it and we have to find ways to support our kids um, to use it responsibly and our staff. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Trustee Murray Elliott. Um, I really like that we're getting ahead of this and I think admin is doing a good job. Um, I also like that we're letting schools set the details because our schools are so different. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot going on here. One of my concerns is the list of social media sites that are restricted. It feels to me like there's new stuff popping up every day. So, you know, it does say that the list is not exhausted, e exhaustive. Um, but does that mean can someone can say, oh, well, it's not on the list, so I'm allowed to be using that? Um, I feel like that's going to be a bit of a challenge as well as all the other challenges that we're facing. But uh, I'd say for the most part, um, good job. OK, thank you. 7.7 .7, .7, Administrative Procedure 870. Uh, responsible use of technology resources. Superintendent Warren. I will start and then I'll just ask uh, Deputy Conrad if he wants to add anything to it. So um, you actually saw the staff one. If you notice, these are the documents that have had the, the biggest ch the changes. Uh, there's a lot added and um, hours were spent in this to um, make sure these will be the documents. Um, so this one is responsible use technology and it's got the two exhibits that go with it. And the one is, of course, all of our staff in the division will be signing the responsible use for staff. And then our students will be with their parents will be signing um, the one for students. And if those documents are not signed, then students will not be using any technology in our school when they're in there because it will be required to be signed. We are at a whole other level now and we need to make sure that we are um, protecting our students and doing what's in their best interest. And um, I don't know. Deputy Conrad, if you want to add anything to that to any of those. Deputy Superintendent Conrad. I feel interesting saying my name again, Deputy uh, John Conrad here. <laughs> um, appreciate uh, the careful review that's happening here by the trustees and also by administration uh, uh, in schools. I mean, principals, vice principals and their teams, um, because this is, I think it's a critical moment in our society as we look at uh, personal communication devices. They suddenly are now in everyone's hand all the time. And uh, social media is also something that just didn't exist 20 or 30 years ago. And so um, what you see in front of you here in terms of uh, AP and then the technology agreement that students sign uh, aligns with what the province has said we must have. Students uh, cannot have access to personal communication devices during instructional time. Uh, and students cannot access social media on any school technology or any school networks. So that's like the absolute base. There is no exceptions to that except if there's medical or instructional needs and that's per student with principal and and parent guidance so there's more to it than that these are long robust documents uh, but i just want to just kind of put in a conversation that those are must do's we can't negotiate that as a division nor can a school that has been said by the province by january we will have students that will not have access to personal communication devices smart watches that talk to each other, phones that talk to each other during instructional time, nor can they go on social media. And I appreciate uh, Trustee Murray Elliott's uh, comment. We are starting with that list. It does indicate it's not exhaustive, uh, but we and all the divisions around us are in regular communication on how are we doing this. Uh, and um, I don't want to cast something in the future, but it's very likely we will be engaged with other divisions and looking at a 
category type restriction as opposed to a list type restriction. And that would be then we would use an external provider, someone who creates those categories. And then there would be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sites that are classified as social media. And so we would then just be saying we're going with Cisco's blocking system. I'm, I'm not saying we're doing that. I'm just giving an example where we might go with that. So again, what you see here is what we must have in place. So it's here. Uh, but from that, now we have conversation with our, our school sites in, in what is going to be in the school discretion and what you might need to add and reflect on this before the January deadline. So appreciate that. Any other questions, concerns, comments? I have one just brief overarching thing, and I'm wondering what has the feedback been thus far, if you've had any student, staff, parents? Well, we haven't heard anything because everybody's just trying to figure it out. And if you watch the news, we're all feeling the same. I mean, okay. it's truly, I think our positive is because it's coming from the government. I hope that our parents are realizing that social media is not healthy for our children, that phones are a distraction. All we have to do is look at adults and when we're around their distraction. Um, is this going to be easy? No, because there's always workarounds and technology is changing so hard and so fast. But I know I have all the faith that our leadership teams will work with their families and that's what school council will be used for is to get feedback back and also you know, it'll be very different guide by community. I'm sorry about working in a high school and I am going to use, I, you know, when you're in a Redwater school, it's five to 12, you have those kids and they get, you know, you have them for longer and more of a static teacher. But when it's, you know, our, when it is the comp and they're there for three years and they're walking in, we haven't had this before and kids are, it's much more fluid coming and going. It's going to be a challenge. Um, so as a feedback right now, I think that because this is province wide, I think everybody's just wondering and going, well, I guess we'll see. Um, I'm just really hoping that this becomes a very strong team effort, as we is very clear in the Education Act that we need to make sure that we are a team. And we can't do this without parent support. Our parents need to be on board. Everybody has to just support us because it will um, it's not going to be easy and there will be bumps. So we will gather the feedback as it goes. Thank you. OK, let's move on to reports from trustees and standing committees. Uh, 8.1. Aaron trustees report. I'm going to I'm going to put it out there, although I'm not anticipating there to be much, but um, I'm assuming chair's report refers to uh, trustee Gibbons report. Do you have anything? The only thing that I attended through the summer was uh, the educational law day that was held by McLennan and Ross. Um, it, it was a really good eye opening. Um, there were we went through case studies wish we could go through more case studies as far as the um the governance um but yeah it was really good and we'll just go quickly around trustee marie elliott do you have anything to report um the only thing i attended over the summer was the indigenous parent advisory meeting at sturgeon heights which was a really wonderful event um I expect it to be continuing this fall. I haven't seen any dates yet and uh, would like to thank admin for the work they did on that and look forward to the continuation of that. Thank you. And my apologies that I did not um, submit a written trustee report. I'm still on summer holiday time. Trustee Dwyer. Uh, yeah, just the uh, only thing to report is uh, um, this morning at the Rotary, um, an Interact student from the high school, uh, Phoebe, I don't can't remember her last name, uh, presented how we had uh, sponsored her uh, to go to the Human Rights Museum in uh, Winnipeg um, for leadership, and she went and she just talked about that this morning. And I didn't, I actually didn't know she was going to be talking about that this morning, but um, great presentation and. Some of the leadership coming out of that interact group is uh, just tremendous. And some of the things they're already doing, they actually, anytime we ask for help at any event that we're doing, there's four or five of them there. So it's it's turned out to be a real good event. And as all of you know, Flint through the email, our uh, chair of that organization is now representing 
uh, on the Alberta Educational um, um, Committee, I guess they call. And I think that's huge for our division to have somebody represented out of there. And uh, again, we're Rotary Group is very good at sponsoring this group. Where it's probably one of our priorities right now. So, so I think we're going to see more good things come out of that group from Rotary. So, and I only said talked about Rotary because I didn't see it on the list here this time. So, uh, I'll talk about trustee there now. And, and tonight is our uh, open house at uh, at Camilla, and at one o'clock this afternoon it's uh, open house at the Hutterite Colony. So, school there. That's all I have. Trustee Briggs. I also attended the Indigenous School Council Advisory Group um, and Trustee Elliott said it very well. So it was great and looking for more to continue. Trustee Pequin. I took the summer off. Thank you. <laughs> Trustee Buga. Um, I also attended the Indigenous Parent Council second meeting, uh, which was great to see that momentum continue. I also attended the Education Law Day, which was quite eye-opening on you know where the the legal loops are as far as policies go I took a lot out of that um and some of the case studies where we're looking at you know potential issues especially with social media and that kind of thing was really relevant to a lot of the, the stuff we're looking at today um and I also volunteered with uh Morinville Public Schools Learning Farm to make sure those chickens got Fed every day through the summer. So that was also very fun. <laughs> All right. And for myself, um, <clears throat> I had a I had a good summer. I did a lot of reading. As I mentioned, I share some of the resources that Superintendent Warren was reading, and I didn't even know it. Um, I also am more than halfway through the PSBAA modules on board governance. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Um, we already tackled one of the hardest ones, so you, you guys are good now. Um, I also attended the PSBC meeting in Grand Prairie. I know I'm just going to add it to my meeting here. It was really impressive. Um, I had no idea that Northern Alberta had such... They are, they'd gotten so creative in the way that they are presenting um, education. We took a two-hour trip to Grimshaw, Alberta, uh, to see how the high school has um, built relationships with both industry and community to provide class one driving school. So they are they already have that up and running. They're certifying students and community members uh, together to get through the class one and the melt training. So their targets are industry in the in the north, logging, uh, oil field services, farmers. So you can, as a farmer, you can either come in and get your training, get your certification. You can have your student do it through part of the high school. Um, the one uh, sort of hiccup they've run into is the age um, age limits in high school, but they're tying it into grade 12. They're trying to get it in sooner. And they have some really interesting ideas how to expand that apprenticeship uh, sort of aspect programming to um, parts. Gosh, now I can't remember the name. I didn't know you had to have a, an apprenticeship to be a parts person, but you do. So they're working on that. They also have turned their old high school into their central office and converted every opportune space into mechanics spaces and wrap program spaces. So they could theoretically start putting out um, heavy duty mechanics apprentices programming soon. So I just commend them on finding ways to keep kids in their communities and, and grow um, industry and support industry and community members. It was really great. We also toured through the um, new hospital in Grand Prairie. They have taken part of the college, brought it right into the hospital, and they are instructing nursing programs out of the hospital. So it's a really interesting collaboration with AHS. Um, and again, the goal is keeping nurses in Northern Alberta. 
So uh, it was really wonderful. We went to some of the schools. It was a well-attended meeting. There was over 60 of us there. Yeah, it was really nice. We had two full buses almost everywhere we went. So um, on the business side of things, you're going to see the budget was approved to come to the AGM in November. So and that is my report. Thank you. Um, Committee of the Whole report available for us. Somebody want to speak on this? Okay. okay, board strategic work plan will be um, deferred to the retreat. So we can go to um, any special committee task group reports, Alberta School Boards Association report. Was there any report to be given? Um, actually, can we take a 10 minute recess right now? Bio break, please.
Welcome back. Starting at uh, number nine, reports from special committee task groups. 9.1 ASBA representative. Um, Janine Peckman, Stone One. Uh, ASBA did not have any meetings over the summer. Um, there was an email sent out that they are changing the date of their organized. Nope, they're changing the location of the organized meetings, so I will make sure to forward that last communication as the rep for ASBA Zone 23 to the new people taking over. All right, 9.2, Public School Boards Association of Alberta representative. Uh, Trish Marie Elliott, um, I forwarded any and all information that was coming from the SBA, of which there were quite a few updates, so everyone should have got those. And I pass over to our new representative for future reports. Thank you. Number 10, unfinished business. Trustee Pequin. Oh, Trustee Pequin, um, I apologize. I should have added this to the agenda and I'm not as organized or as efficient as I was hoping. So I would like to put a motion on the floor. Um, I move that the Board of Trustees establish an ad hoc policy advisory committee for the 2024-2025 school year. Um, according to policy 230 of our board committees, the board may establish, okay, background information, the board may establish additional committees, task groups, and or any structures as deemed necessary by board motion. So the mandate, the membership, and the terms of such ad hoc committees shall be determined by board motion. So with that being said, I apologize that nobody has this in advance. The mandate would be to make recommended changes to the board regarding revisions to the existing board policies and the development of new policies. Um, your membership would be, I'm gonna suggest three trustees with a quorum of two that have voting powers. All trustees can attend meetings. It would just be the three um, members who would have voting power. Administrative support. I'm going to go to Deputy Superintendent Ed Services because I don't know if that's needed, but he used to be. So thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> um, the meetings will be held at the call of the chair or the administrator assigned. Meetings are closed to the public. Uh, the committee chair will report to the board. And the po the the purpose is just to we're we're kind of changing the numbering and the structuring of our policies. So I think it would be for this year. Um, helpful to have a policy committee go through reading one and reading two to make sure that no information is going to be missing from transferring policies over and it just frees up some more time during our committee of the whole for other work. So policies will still come to the board before final approval because that's how policies work, but the background work that sometimes takes weeks or months and we make Mr. Conrad go back to administration and get all the feedback will be done kind of behind the scenes this one year as an ad hoc committee. I don't know what the whole motion just there was, so sorry. Um, I think the motion is to create an ad hoc committee of three trustees to policy to advisory committee. So does policy advisory committee with one admin support, um, whom that is, we can um, ask for guidance from Superintendent Warren. Um, does that sort of encapsulate what you're, what we're, all right. So that is the motion on the floor. Any discussion? Trustee Gibbons. Uh, just a, a question for clarification. Do we have to have a second motion then for who's going to be on that? Or do we? We, we can have a second motion for who will be on that. Let's vote on the ad hoc committee at this time. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Uh, Trustee Gibbons or uh, Trustee Pecklin, would you like to speak to the members of said committee? No. <laughs> Trustee Gibbons, please. Uh, I would, I would in, enjoy actually being a part of the policy committee um, as one of the three. If okay, can I ask for two more volunteers? Trustee Pequin. One more, please. Trustee Buga. 
if anybody else would like to have a voting um, part of it, I will still attend the meetings. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't really, as long as I can speak at the meetings, I am happy to have somebody else sit as the voting member if they would All like right. to. So we have Trustee Peckwin, Trustee Gibbons. Do we want, does anybody else want to be a voting member on said ad hoc committee? Looks like it's yours, Trustee Buga. Thank you. Thank you, you three. Or Trustee Gibbons. I'm just wondering, do I have to put a motion of that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say, can can I make the motion? Absolutely, you may. Uh, that the Board of Trustees approve the following members for the Ad Hoc Policy Committee for the 2024-2025 school year. Trustee Pequin, Trustee Buga, and Trustee Gibbons. All in favor? Oh, absolutely. Sorry, Trustee Murray mm -hmm. Elliott. Um, any thoughts initially on what these meetings would look like as far as virtual, in person? Virtual. I'm hearing hybrid format. Okay. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Um, questions, comments, anybody online? Can I get a motion to go in camera? Oh, it's not me. <laughs> Trustee Pequin. I move we go in camera. All in favor? Carried unanimously. <clears throat> For the first 